Hello everybody, Jordan here, the PH is silent, and with the release of Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, I wanted to discuss warlocks with genie patrons. Genies are not new to Dungeons and Dragons, I mean, of, of course they're not, but they are also not new to the realm of warlocks. Before warlock was an official class in Dungeons and Dragons, there were wizards and sorcerers, but some wizards actually got their powers from genies, and that class was known as the Sha'ir. The Sha'ir was a type of wizard found in the al qadim campaign setting, which is part of the Forgotten Realms just very far east and south in the Land of Fate, or Zakara. In Zakara, wizards were known as sorcerers, sha'irs, or elemental mages. Sorcerers were the most common, and these men and women would study magic and were able to commune with the elemental powers of their environment. Sorcerers of the al qadim campaign setting could manipulate two of the four elements. These two could be from opposing sides, such as fire or water, because magic in Zakara isn't drastically different from Faerun, but the process of becoming a mage is different. Instead of a conjuration or transmutation wizard, a Zakaran sorcerer aligns themselves with an element of magic, rather than a specific school. The elements were sand, wind, sea, and flame, and each element had a province, such as the province of flame, and one could dedicate themselves to one or two of these elements, mastering the spells from that province, much like spells in a traditional school of magic. Some of my favorites are from the province of sand, sand swords, sand shadow, and the whispering sand. I wanted to create a sandwich for a long time now. Elemental mages are wizards that made the decision to devote all their focus into one element. To these mages, there is just one right element, and coincidentally, the element reflected the wizard's personality. But if the wizard was influenced by the magic or the magic is influenced by the wizard, no one is really sure. It was actually a fun system for AD&D. Mechanically, you would gain 10% more XP because of limiting the amount of magic you could learn, i.e. limiting your character to a single province. To advance in level, you had to perform a service, which was a challenge that must be met before you were allowed to progress to the next level. With the majority of parties using milestone leveling now, this has become a lost mechanic for future editions of D&D. I wonder if we can create an incentive like this, but just not using XP anymore. Finally, we come to the Sha'irs, masters of legend in the land of fate. These people openly talk with some of the most formidable magic entities in Zakara. Apparently, they have struck a bargain with genie kind as a whole. This was most likely the inspiration for the genie warlock that was released in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. Specifically in Tasha's, it says that you've made a pact with a noble genie. And I've made videos on the various elemental planes and the noble genies that live there. And each of these noble genies has have a controlling nature, and they've created large kingdoms on these elemental planes. If you want to know more, I'll leave a playlist in the corner and in the doobly-doo below. Now, genies, for some reason, tend to have an interest in the prime material plane. Several throughout Faerun history have made their way to the southern area of the Sword Coast. For whatever reason, though, genies have a vested interest in Zakara, from business, trade, to government. And now knowing that, it does make sense that genies would grant power to creatures in return for partnerships, unique items, or governmental influence. There is a power hierarchy of genies, and smaller, less powerful genies are not the ones warlocks would necessarily make a pact with. Smaller genies probably couldn't even grant the power of wish. So a noble genie, as outlined in Tasha's, is the place to start if you want to make a pact for magical powers. There are a few Forgotten Realms named genies that you could tie your character to. Callum and Memnon to start. Memnon was a noble Afridi genie lord from the city of Brass who founded the city of Memnonar in Faerun. He was at war with another genie named Callum and arguably founded the city just to anger Callum. Now Callum was a noble jinn from the Plain of Air that founded the Callum Empire, which is now known as Callum Shan. The two genies and their subjects warred with each other. And for over 400 years, major battles took place and destroyed the land, and, and it was just chaos. However, by negative 6,100 DR, the elves were fed up, and using elven high magic, they enacted a spell that split Callum and Memnon's bodies from their consciousness. The Afridi Memnon's mind went into the ground, and Callum's into the sky. Now, after that, their bodies were taken, along with a hundred other genies that served them, and they were all fused together into a gem known as the Callum Memnon crystal. 
The crystal appears as a 60-sided diamond and sparkled even if there was no light. It was a deadly and powerful artifact, but the rumor was that if you touched it, you would gain the powers of the many genies trapped within. Now this sounds like a great setup for a genie warlock character. A dream speaks to you, it lures you into the Kalim Desert. There you find the Kalimemnon crystal, and touching it, both genies, Memnon and Kalim, offer you great power if you aid in their release and help destroy the other. Whom will you work for? Now, like a lot of Forgotten Realms lore, the Spell Plague messed this all up. This artifact is gone because of the Spell Plague, and the genies were released, going back to the Plane of Fire and the other to the Plane of Air. But it's your game, and maybe the Kalamemnon Crystal still exists, or perhaps your character has found a shard of the old crystal that gives you a link to Kalam or Memnon. The two, after all, do still hate each other, and would love to have a spy on the Prime Material Plane. Other noble genies in the D&D universe include Kabril Ali al Sara al Zalazil, a Dao who ruled parts of the Plane of Earth, Husam al Balil ben Nafhat al Yugayim was the noble jinn of the Plane of Air, his home is in the Citadel of Ice and Steel. Marake al Sedan al Harik ben Lazan is a noble Afridi who is Sultan of the City of Brass on the Plane of Fire. And finally, Kal Bari al Durant al Amwaji ibn Jari is the noble Marid that rules the Citadel of 10,000 Pearls on the Elemental Plane of Water. The genie warlocks and the Sha'ir of AD&D are very different mechanically, and I, but I think there are a few ways you could play a genie warlock as a Sha'ir. The Sha'ir in and out of combat have a familiar in the shape of an elemental genie called a Jen. These Jen serve the Sha'ir and would go to the elemental planes and barter for magical spells. If you want to cast a spell, your Jen would disappear to that plane for an amount of time only to reappear with the magic. Place that magic into your head and allow you to cast say, Fireball. I love the story potential of this and the visual of it, but the actual mechanics aren't as fun. See, the Sha'ir in combat would send their gen away for a spell and you'd roll on a bunch of charts to see if they were able to get that spell, reappearing a random number of rounds later to potentially not have the magic for you at all. That's not fun. But a Pact of the Chain Genie Warlock with a familiar reflavored as a gen, that would be awesome. And honestly, all the Warlock packs make sense with genies, but my personal wish is to play a Pact of the Chain Warlock just to call myself a Sha'ir, fighting alongside my magical gen that runs and grabs me various spells when I need them to. The limited wish of a Genie Warlock, well, that could be your gen asking on your behalf a noble genie for a small wish. To a Warlock, the gen could be a good friend or it could be a strict business relationship. The gen is actually your noble genie's representative, making sure you stay on task. Within Zakara, there is a magical society of Sha'irs known as the Viziers. They are very small and made up entirely of women. A secret group, the leader is known as the Queen of Ears and has a large spy network for the Viziers. Despite the low membership, the Viziers do have influence in politics and economics of Zakara. So perhaps your character works for the Viziers or is one herself and was sent to Faerun to scout ahead and see if it's worth exploring or conquering. The society is run on secrets and aims to collect and protect them. Now there were new elemental style spells found in the Alkadim setting. If you're interested in them, I recommend the Complete Sha'ir's Handbook, which had a few spells from first to eighth level, and more can be found in the Alkadim campaign setting. All of these spells were elementally themed. Finally, I've spoke about this artifact before, but I feel like it needs repeating here. The Seal of Jafar al Samal. This was an urn, an artifact that was highly coveted by wizards, sorcerers, and the Sha'ir alike. Made of gold and standing about three feet tall, it was decorated with silver and the top sealed with lead. Inside were four gen, one for each element. The artifact gave Zakarans within a large radius of the urn the ability to summon and command genies. If you were not a Sha'ir and attuned to it, you were granted many powers of a Sha'ir. And if you were a Sha'ir, you obtained greater control over genies and your own powers were enhanced. Now the creator, Jafar al-Samal, was known as the first Sha'ir, the first person to really make a magical pact with genies. He turned on his patron and utilizing their power created this artifact that would let him control genies. I mean, that sounds like the most warlock thing you could do, right? 
He was not an evil person, and actually having the urn in Zakara, there was a beautiful time of peace and prosperity. The people were able to utilize genie magic for the benefit of all Zakaran citizens. After his death, though, his pupils fought over who should own the artifact, and during the fighting, the urn disappeared, presumably stolen and hidden away, but where and by whom, nobody knows. Perhaps the seal of Jafar al-Samal could make its way into your game. At the very least, when you are within a mile of this artifact, perhaps your genie's vessel changes to that of an urn, and you don't know why. With new patron releases, my Warlock patron videos were incomplete, so now I'll do some research on the Fathomless, and I'll see if I can find some interesting patrons in or out of the Forgotten Realms that you could use for a Fathomless Warlock. I'd love to have you subscribe. I make weekly videos on the world of Dungeons and & Dragons and their mythology, and if you are interested in Zakara, Noble Genies, or the Sha'ir, check out some of these videos. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next one.